So the reality is, then you go out there and you say, you guys from this community, you're failing your women. The question I have to ask for any woman across the world, what does a person get when they deal with you? The generosity, the affection, the love, the kindness, the caring. Not 100% of Nigerian men are like that. And conversely, not 100% of Kenyan men are the type of men that, that she doesn't want to have a relationship with. Happy New Year. Welcome to Kenganda. This is the Reap Part Podcast. We'll just jump right in. Watch this clip with us and react to it with us. First and foremost, the reason as to why we are choosing Nigerian men is because Nigerian men are so loving. They are so caring. Nigerian men know the value of a woman. Nigerian men respect women and women are their first priority. You have failed as Kenyan men. Today, let's call a spade a spade. You have even been ranked the most irresponsible men in Africa. I am not saying all Kenyan men are bad. I have had bad and good experiences with Kenyan men, and I know there are good and responsible Kenyan men out here. Do not get me wrong. Again, I would like to talk to Kenyans because 60% of Kenyans hate Nigerians. You really hate Nigerians. You label Nigerians as smugglers, fraudsters, scammers, da 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 da. You as a Kenyan man, are you good? No. You as Kenyans, are you any better? No. Why do you have to drag a certain nationality simply because you don't like them? It's not all Nigerians who are bad. It's not all Nigerians who are good. Okay. Damn. Jesus Christ. She sounds like she found herself a Nigerian man and she's willing to go to war to defend this man. I hope it's good. Let me, to before we let uh, uh, Gaba, that part <laughs> about Kenyans not liking Nigerians. Yeah. I was in um, story time music. I was in Nairobi in 2018 when I first met Ward and Maya. And uh, we were going to the Yaya Center. We were staying um, um, in Westlands. So we needed to make a payment to the owner. Somehow he was not able to come to get the money in cash. So we had to pay him by in peso. So upon um, arriving to the Yaya Center, we didn't really know how in peso worked. So he was going around asking people, um, hey, I need some help trying to send this money to this number. Can you help me? And nobody was helping him, right? And it, what we found out was they thought he was a Nigerian, he's Ghanaian. Yeah. Right? So nobody would help him because they felt like he was a Nigerian scammer. So... I, I found out maybe from that experience, I don't know how true it is, but when I talk to Kenyans in my short interactions with them and whenever Nigerians come up, there does seem to be a little bit of a discord, especially with interactions between Nigerian men and Kenyan women. I have heard about that a lot, you know, whenever it comes up, you know, and so I will tend to, to believe she said 60%, I don't know the number, but yeah. definitely yeah. I feel like that, that tends to be an issue in, in, in the country. Well, I think Nigerians have a a certain reputation. Like she said, oh, you're calling them scammers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a reputation that most Nigerian men have in most countries. Mm -hmm. Because the Nigerians who go to those countries, maybe sometimes some of them <clears throat> don't represent them the best way. So I do... I do see where some Kenyans come from because they think most Nigerians are scammers. Even in Uganda here, when you see a Nigerian, the first thing you're thinking, oh, is he a Yahoo boy? You know, mm. thinking, oh, this is a legit businessman. But but who else complained about East African men before? Everyone. <laughs> no. um, Play that who, clip! <laughs> what I'm trying to say is East African men here, they're very stingy mm -hmm. because, you know, this topic came up because Oshe was saying he empowers African men to empower women. But these African men don't be empowering women. They mm. empower themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, Osha is putting money in that pocket. That money stays in that pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it does not cross over to any woman. Uh, and, uh, 
the videographer, Brivian, who's in charge of today and who's going to edit this, said he left a girl on the expressway. Do you guys understand <laughs> on the expressway? The expressway on the road. Something similar like happened a rat to me. A guy dropped me the off highway. at work and he made me cross the road. <laughs> he could have dropped me inside. Okay? But because it's not, he just said, you know what? You can cross. Imagine putting my life in danger. Mm-hmm. The road is very busy, but he made me cross. Kohani had another incident. A guy made her pay for gas for her to be dropped off. Actually, don't need her. Yo. Said the same thing. <laughs> Me? What? Why is there, what, why are, you know, because you said something very similar about Ugandan men, East African men, as she's saying. Yeah. They're not romantic. She said, why is that well, an ongoing will, thing? If you've met a Nigerian, you know Nigerians give you 150%. Of what? Of everything they have. Okay, not like like the the energy they have. Like they do not just approach you with, oh, here's some peanuts. No, they approach you like, here's the whole bag. This bag will never get empty. Mm-hmm. Eat as much as you can. That's how most Nigerians approach them. So I do. So when they do approach some girls, of course the girls will be like, oh yeah, oh, no one has done this for me before. So of course I'm going to lean towards the Nigerian man till they get their heart broken and then they learn a lesson and then it's just like, yeah. Is that what happened to you? What? Why? Why are you asking me? Did you? Because you kind of felt very strongly in the way that she felt. So did you have when that you as guys, a personal when, experience? When, when did you see that? Right now? No, we just watched the clip. So <laughs> Which clip? <laughs> no. Mm. The clip where I was saying um, the men are, are unromantic. But I was just um, shooting shots at Alta Brian. He's not here today, so oh. we're good. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I have a couple of issues with what this lady's position is. Mm. First of all, I find it problematic mm-hmm. when somebody use when someone uses generalizations to describe men from an entire the entire male population of a nation. You Kenyan men mm-hmm. are failing, right? Those Nigerian men are the best are the greatest shit since sliced bread. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, no, that's not true. Not all Kenyan men represent that which she finds objectionable and not all Nigerian men represent that which she is saying she loves so much in terms of being affectionate, mm-hmm. etc. The generosity, the affection, the love, the kindness, the caring, not 100% of Nigerian men are like that. And conversely, not yeah. 100% of Kenyan men are the type of men that, that she doesn't want to have a relationship with. Um, clearly she's biased. She maybe maybe she's found love with a Nigerian guy and uh, she's putting on for her dude to make yeah. sure that that dude tops up her post Christmas allowance <laughs> a little bit more generously than he ordinarily would because yeah. she overspent a little bit this December season. Mm-hmm. Right. But I genuinely think that anytime I see a woman ranting and raving about, oh, men are bad at this, men mm-hmm. are bad at this. Yo, trust me when I tell you. I'm sorry for the trauma that you've been through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry for the struggle that you've been through and trying to establish a a relationship that you can feel joyful and proud about. But that's your struggle. Mm -hmm. Don't make your struggle our struggle. This is not a collective struggle. That's your individual issue. Mm -hmm. Stop stop trying to make your bad choices Mm -hmm. something that other women need to be in fear of, mm-hmm. right? And similarly, men shouldn't categorize all women from this group as that which he experienced because O'Shea's issue is not my issue. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, that's always a thing that that rubs me the wrong way when I see videos like this, when I see people, not just women, people from all genders, right? Because, you, you know, we're inclusive around here, right? People from all genders just ranting and raving about that which they don't like. Talk about what you want, right? I firmly believe in the law of attraction. I firmly believe that if you're going to get on the internet and shout and rant and rave about that which you don't want, all you're doing is attracting more of it. Yeah. Mm. Where are the stories of women getting online? Where are the TikToks? Where are the reels of women getting online celebrating that which... They are there, actually. Yes, but do those go viral? Yeah, a recent one went viral. Um, a girl was complaining about her job, so her man told her to quit. Yeah. Um, broke her leads and then helped her relocate to him. 
So there's that. That that brother is one of God's <laughs> greatest men. <laughs> yeah. And I celebrate him. And I congratulate that brother mm-hmm. for doing that thing. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. For having the means to be able to do so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's great that we can celebrate situations like that. But she just seems to be like, and the other thing that I didn't like was in one breath, she says, you Kenyan men are failing to do this and this and this and this and this. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. But then she was chastising the Kenyans for generalizing about Nigerians. Uh-huh. Right? Oh, great point. You can't talk badly about the Nigerians. You can't generalize. You can't talk about them. Literally, it, two, sentence previous is, two sentences previously, she was railing against the Kenyan men. So mm. there are so many inconsistencies in what she's saying mm-hmm. that I can't take her seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand that this is an opinion that a lot of women share. I mean, we've had debates on this very same podcast mm-hmm. about relationships, about male-female dynamics. We've had all of that mm-hmm. uh, conversation. I just think in her particular case, she's making a whole lot of noise. Mm-hmm. And I don't think she's making any intelligent cases for people to really think that she's dropped science on us or given us knowledge or anything like that. And there was a caption in there uh, on the video where it says, these are the same men that you want us to marry. You want us to marry men like you, blah, blah, Mm. blah. Right. Create dysfunctional homes of trauma. Create dysfunctional homes of trauma. Okay, fine. So when, when your parents choose your husband, there's one outcome, but how well are you doing choosing for yourselves? Mm. Do you know how many Chronically single women there are out here (laughs) who complain on a daily basis about how difficult it is to find a good man because their picker is broken. Your mama didn't choose that man for you. Your daddy didn't bring that man to you and introduce him to you and say, I'm advocating for you to date this guy because I think he's someone who meets my approval. You met that dude while you was twerking your ass in a nightclub, wearing a slinky dress, putting your ass on display oh and now when this dude wants to treat you like a sex object and all you're good for is for is, is for his entertainment purposes only oh. when you want him to start taking you seriously after you let the nigga smash within the first 48 hours of meeting him and now you realize that he cannot give you the respect and consideration that you feel like okay. you warrant or deserve okay. is his problem okay Nah, yo, we going in on 2024, man. Yeah. We're we're laying the truth bare. I'm on my Cat Williams today, <laughs> yo. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I cannot condone the hypocrisy of of people who behave like they want something fast and fun, but yeah. then complain when they're treated like an object for fast it's fun. fun yeah. mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I can't condone anybody who gets out here and tries to act like they're better than the behavior that they perpetuate themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm calling bullshit on her. Mm -hmm. I know that this is probably one of a million videos like this that will appear in my, in my feed over the course of the next couple of weeks. It is what it is, but her, nah, she's, she's garbage. She's definitely biased. She's whack to me. You think she's in love? I think she's bleeped that out. I don't think she's in love. I think she just, she's, she's still in shock or something. So she's standing up for her. Nigerian men, but I think she's definitely biased. You can't, there's good and bad everywhere, guys. There's right. good and bad everywhere. There are good men and bad men in each corner. And there are yeah. good women and bad, bad women, women in all those same okay. dark corners. Yes. <laughs> they they hide together. Yeah. <laughs> they congregate together. There's good and bad everywhere. So you can't just put off a whole country because, you know, of what you've gone through. Yeah. But if you decide to date a Nigerian man, that's on you. Oh, I hope they come in the comment section after you. Listen, all the Nigerian, all, love, all the Nigerian I'm, I'm dudes you, I know, uh, as a girl, yeah. yeah, all the Nigerian dudes I know are happily married, yeah, with happy wives, wonderful, prosperous families. So I'm only ever going to give props to a Nigerian man because those guys know how to get done. Oh yeah, True. they're goal oriented, they're highly motivated, very disciplined when it comes to their work ethic, and they make shit happen. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think maybe those are some of the qualities that women feel like they're gravitating toward. But now you want to espouse all of the other superficial stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you said, instead of giving you peanuts, he gives you the whole bag. That's fine. What if the guy didn't have the the whole bag to give you? Mm. He still has those same principles of being focused, dedicated, hardworking, and disciplined. So isn't isn't that the characteristic of the man that you want rather than all of this other stuff? The guy buys me flowers. Mm -hmm. He love bombs me. Because once all that, it goes away. Once all of your good looks go away, you still want the guy to love you, right? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Once after you've pushed out a couple of kids and then that six pack turns into a keg and you 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 you're no longer the, the the young fly fancy shorty that you once were and you and you out here just dressing in house dresses when you go into to, right. to, to to every event that you go to, right? You still want that man to love you, right? Mm. So stop placing this artificial expectation on your man to be anything other than a good guy. Yeah. Stop making this dude extend himself to go above and beyond to exhaust his financial capacity to be able to impress you. Stop making this man go above and beyond to try and perpetuate a lifestyle that he can't afford just yeah. because you feel like mm-hmm. that's what is appealing to you in this moment. Mm-hmm. When later on down the line, when we're old, tired, that's not what's going to matter. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, people need long forward thinking perspectives they need they need foresight when it comes to the type of relationship that you're trying to craft in your life the sexy and exciting thing probably isn't going to have the longevity that you want it to have Mm -hmm. so people need to also have that perspective when it comes to choosing a partner yeah right we're building lives together yes again generosity care Mm -hmm. all of those things are important but when you attach it to the superficial, mm-hmm. yeah. when you attach it to things that have a price tag, mm-hmm. when you attach it to things that he can offer me this, which you can't, and therefore I'm going to give him my attention simply because this is what's important to me right now, and you lose out on that good guy, look in your mirror and tell yourself, you did this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not the dude's fault because you chose the wrong guy. Right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for saying that. Gabs is going to become a what? what? What do they call them? A love guru or something? Yeah, he'd be like, he'd be like uh, but Derek Jackson Jr. Yeah, no, Kevin Samuels. <laughs> Gabs, well, thank you so much for that. I hope that if the ladies watching um this, you can pick something from what he has said. But there's also a reason why the mm-hmm. girls are complaining. You have to address the uh, why to the room. No, I'm just saying. I'm just talking to God. like there's a reason why the girls are complaining about these men not being romantic, and it doesn't have to be um them giving them anything materialistic or. It's something. Okay, equally. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Yeah. So I mean, we, we we we've again we've we've sat in these conversations with our brethren who like the notion of 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 advocating for guys being stoic, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't show love, mm-hmm. right? I'm 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 a man. I'm an African man, right? I'm yeah. the original African man. <laughs> That's what Brian said. So to speak, right? <laughs> so yeah. A lot of guys from past generations Mm. have kind of given this impression that uh, if you're the head of your household, you only do what suits you and pleases you. And as long as you're a provider Mm -hmm. and as long as you're a caretaker in terms of the physiological needs of your partner, all the other romantic and lovey-dovey stuff isn't necessary or needed. And all I can say is be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. Some guys are putting on a front. Some guys are putting on an act because they think that that's what's expected of them Mm -hmm. to be hardcore, to be uncaring, to be very rigid in their willingness to cater to their women. Right. So a lot of guys are are, are doing that because they feel like that's what a man should do. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just didn't have the examples of, 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 of what a loving, romantic, caring, affectionate relationship looks like. I don't know. I can't speak for 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 the other man, but yeah. I'll tell it to you like this. Men don't you men out there should not be concerned about the opinions of others as long as you in your conscience know you're doing right by yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also manage your expectations accordingly, mm-hmm. okay? If you are going after women who like men who behave a certain way and you behave in a way that is the polar opposite to that, eliminate yourself from the possibility of being with those women and stick to the women who conform yeah. to embracing men who behave the way that you do. Mm-hmm. Right. You, 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 you can't say I'm a vegetarian, but I want to go and date a woman who likes steak. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't make sense. You mm-hmm. can't offer the opposite of what she wants and thinks. So a lot of men are so bold to think that just because I want her, I'm determined to get her yeah. what she wants. I'm going to have her. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A lot of men are bold enough to say that. And, and they end up playing themselves and embarrassing themselves in the process. Um, and a lot of relationships, 
uh, become messy and 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 just convoluted with a whole bunch of misunderstanding when people don't just be true to themselves. Mm-hmm. So, Joan, to your point, mm-hmm. yes, there are a lot of men out there that aren't romantic. There are a lot of men out there who don't who don't warriors. who don't have an appetite to do anything more than provide what is needed. As long yeah. as hey, you're drinking water, you don't need juice, you have water. Right? Mm. Well, you don't need a fancy meal. There's rice and chapati and mm. beans. There's food at home. There's food at home. <laughs> Why we go out to dinner? There's food at home. You know yeah. what I mean? There are men who believe that. Mm-hmm. But there are also women who match well with men who are like that. Yeah. Mm. So what I'm saying is there's somebody for everybody. Right. Find your person, stick with them, mm. and ride it out. Yeah. But when you choose... Live and die by your choices and do not make the negative outcome of your choices somebody else's fault. Mm-hmm. It only belongs to the two people in the relationship. The chances are, if you're blaming the other person, it's probably your fault. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because you made the choice. Yeah. You preach. Man, I didn't get I, I don't think I could say much more <laughs> than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That nigga wrote in. He that nigga wrote in took well, out my point. On so. Yeah. So I, I would just <laughs> You know, add to to this, and w- what I always find interesting is um, when a lady has to date a foreigner, um, and he must be a Nigerian living in Nairobi, mm. it must indicate one thing: the guys there don't value her, or feel like if they're dating her, they're overpaying. That's something that we don't talk about. So why do they feel that way? <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to deal with it from what it is. If any lady is with a foreigner in her city or in Africa, the chances are the local guys know something that we don't know. Otherwise, you'd already be snatched up by somebody that was willing to pay the price of what you're asking for. And this is some of the dirty secrets that I find out in Kampala and Nairobi, especially because I spend my time there. I go to nice restaurants and nice places all the time. I see beautiful Kenyan women with their husbands or their spouses. And I would assume in Somalian, you see a lot of those people there. Seem to be okay. When I hear a young lady like her talking and the way that she talks, I'm like, yeah, okay. I see that attitude. With somebody who is successful and has optionality, it's not going to put up with that at all, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of ladies want to have somebody who is a higher earner, a romantic guy. And, uh, you know, when you want to go up that, you know, that the food chain of, of successful and talented men, and sometimes a guy is a foreigner, he just doesn't know. There are a lot of chicks I dated in Africa as a foreigner, and I had no idea who they were, their family, or what local guys knew about them until one day I found out, and I was like, oh, wow, that's embarrassing. Because a lot of foreigners don't know. Nigerian guy don't know your community, but if you talk to guys around that they know, there's a reason why that girl looks like that, but nobody wants her. So the reality is, then you go out there and you say, you guys from this community, you're failing your women. The question I have to ask for any woman across the world, what does a person get when they deal with you? Now, as a man who is doing well, which all women want a man that's doing well. So do you need to have a chef? For example, if a guy is doing well, no, he can have a chef. In fact, shout out to Chef Gilbert, right? So we don't need you for that. If it's just sex and kids, it's Africa, right? Nobody needs you for that. What do I need you for, really? You're not going to like what I'm saying, but I'm going to tell you. You need to get along with my program. So a lot of guys in Africa feel they're successful anywhere in the world. And I need you to not mess anything up. And I don't want you causing problems. Not to say that I'm perfect or you're going to be perfect, but if you're going to be here, you're not going to be here and not add the value for what I'm getting for you because you don't have to be here. You don't have to be here. And, and if you fuck with me too much, you won't. That's what guys that have money and guys who are doing well they don't even waste their time even explaining that to you if you're not even worth it. Like, what? You see something I don't like? 
do you know how easy it is for a guy in Kampala or Lagos or Nairobi? If a guy just thinks you breathe wrong today, man, you're gone the next day quick. I'm talking about, I've observed this with guys in this city. Guys who are married, guys who have married and they have side chicks, the wives know each other and everything. And at any time down the value chain, if you say something that they don't like, you're done. Right then and there. You know what I mean? So you have a lady that, that that's, that's talking about these Kenyan men. Well, if your own men don't desire you to the level you want them to, what does that say about you? You don't understand the market and you can't make somebody want you. Let me say as a, as a, as a man, Nagaba can attest to this. We spend so much of our life trying to get to the point we work on ourselves that we can even take a fine chick out on a date that we like. Like, like before a woman meets somebody like me, I spent 20 years of my life or 25 years of my life working, developing, getting shot down, building a business. Just so I could be like, oh, I'm in a situation where I could pick a chick that I got a chance with. Now, when I get there, though, if you f with me or somebody like that, I'm just using an example. And, and I don't like what you're saying. Well, you're done. That's how any guy who's successful, you're done because look at where I am now. I've worked so hard to get all these options. I may not want to give it up yet. So now you're mad at these guys who don't want to do anything for you. Kenyan man or any man is going to do what he needs to take for a woman who is worth it. And the thing is, what is the value for the investment? In relationships, we all want relationships. Relationships are built on value. That's what it is. What are you getting for me dealing with you? If I have to stop talking to whatever woman I'm dealing with, and I know some people are like, oh, that's massage, that's sex. It's true. A guy who's worked so hard to get all those options, he's not going to just give it up. So I've worked all my life, and most men who are in Kenya, especially Kenyan men, Uganda men, hey, those guys are not going to just give it up just like that because you want them to. So why should I commit to you? No woman can explain what they're going to give to this guy. Because if I say, you know what, as a Kenyan guy, if I can make the assessment that if I stop talking to you today, my life is not going to change. Do, do, you know, do, do you know how, how bad that is? Most ladies want a man that makes more money than them, more successful than them. What are you asking for? Do you know what you're asking for? You're asking to get dropped once you fuck up. Quick, fast, in a hurry. That's what you're asking for. If you want a guy that has those options in this Africa and Nairobi and this economy, and you want to be able to take care of you, and you talk back or you disrespect him, what are you asking for? Get all your shit and get the fuck out. That's what these ladies are asking for. And then when they get that, or they don't, they get ghosted. Is it a term they use here to get ghosted? They get ghosted. Because none of these chicks want broke guys. She's talking like that because a Nigerian guy with some money is probably taking care of her in comparison to a Kenyan guy with some money. And the Kenyan guys with money are just not going to put up with something like that. Because, and I'm going to say this, East African guys like obedience, from what I can tell. They want a woman that when I tell you to do something, or I explain to do something, I expect you to do it since you're asking this of me. If you're a woman and you have the attitude like, oh, wait, you want to control me? You want to... It's that, it's that easy. It's easy. What's the song? Like Sunday morning. And a lot of women don't understand that. And you want to talk about you failed the guys I, you, you want. Hey, look. Well, if a man's going to take care of you and give his provision, shit, his, his provision you're not going to be talking shit back. You're not going to be disrespectful. You're definitely not going to have an attitude like that because a guy is just not going to put up with it that the one that you want. Now, if you want to do that, get a guy that has the same earning capacity as you. He's, you know, in your same situation. That way he can deal with you because she said she dealt with Kenya men before. Okay, so then why didn't that work out? Big mouth, you know? So if you, if you don't want to get dropped, for that guy to take care of you and put you in a nice neighborhood and, and, and take your kids to, to nice colleges and schools, you're not going to be talking to that man crazy. That's what you're not going to do. And sometimes I heard it gets even worse. It could get even physical. I'm not even dealing with that. But just on the base, basic principle of a guy who has money in Africa, and I've seen it. Guys here in Africa have money. They are like gods. They're, they're like gods. They can get away with anything. I look at these guys in awe. Like, wow, did he just do that? Yes. 
So women got to understand what they're asking for. When you ask for like the top 1% of guys in your country or 10% of guys in your country, and you're not going to give a top 10% effort, a guy can just, he can afford to say, okay, well, you, if I leave you alone today, is my life going to be better or worse? You have no, no bearing on my outcome. Bye. Next one, bye. Next one, bye. In fact, instead of me competing for you, compete for me. Like I'm the one that is going to take care of you, right? Like I'm not entering into your world. You're entering into my world as a Kenyan man, my world as a Ugandan man. Like I have what you're looking for. It's not the other way around. So you need to compete to be here. She sounds like she wants a guy to take care of her as she is and stay. And I'm going to tell you one, everything else that Nigerian guy's going to get tired of that too. Yeah. It, it, it's just going to happen. And women going to have to understand, I'm going to say this, you know, get my God on real quick. Mm -hmm. There is no way as, as, as marriages are declining in the West, I guess here, you're going to talk back to a man that's successful, be disrespectful. And, and in a place like Uganda or Kenya, where there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of good looking ladies that are going to get with the program, you're not going to be there. I can assure you it within five minutes. And if you get a problem with that, get a foreigner until he figures it out. <laughs> Cause that's what women want to do. Women want to take their, let me just say this. A lot of women want to take their bad problems to foreign men. Cause they don't know. Cause you can, you can make a foreign guy can do what? Overpay. That's what foreigners do. We overpay for stuff that the guys already know that it's not worth it. And good services, business relationships, governmental taxes, women. They know foreigners are stupid until the foreigner ain't stupid no more. Then what? And she'll be right back where she started. Trust me with that attitude. Oh, thank you for that. Did I hurt your feelings? <laughs> no. Why? <would> <laughs> Because yep. Nigerians, right? We all know that it's a big rumor out there that Nigerian men, they kind of just play yeah. in the country that they're in. But when they want to get married, they go back to where they're from and get married. It's a rumor, yes. It's a rumor. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you why I believe that is. Because nobody typically treats you better than your own women. That's kind of pretty much what I believe. So if you're somebody that is a woman that is from a, like, for example, me being an American living in Uganda, I have to be so much better in what I'm doing than somebody that's a Ugandan to get respect. If you're a person that I feel like it's necessary that you're not better than somebody from the African-American community, what is my mother going to tell? If I, let's say you, you have an attitude like that, I bring you back home. My mother's going to ask me two questions. Where did you find her? And why don't you take her back to her people? Because I understand why she wants you. What is she going to do for us? When a family asks that question and you can't answer it, my mama say, get rid of her. The same thing that your father would tell me if I'm here and I'm fucking up. You have to remember, when people want to adopt you into their family and you're a foreigner, you typically need to be better than what is available. The woman has to also be, ain't just the man got to be better, the woman got to be better. If you are not, if I ever feel as a man that you are not better than somebody in my community, do you know what's going to happen? For the time that I see you, we're going to have a good time. But eventually, I'm going to drop you off where I found you. It's a hard reality. Is it, is it a hard reality? <laughs> I, I, I want to piggyback on something that you just said very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly. You talked about relationships are, are based on value. Yes. Right? Relationships are based on value. Business relationships, pers personal relationships are based on value. Value that you add to and create for one yes. another. Yes. Right? One of my favorite legendary sports TV personalities, Jalen Rose, mm -hmm. loves to say, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you have the leverage to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And in the context of these relationships, on both sides for men and women, mm -hmm. there's the whole thing of high value men, high value women, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, when we're sitting down across from each other and I'm laying out what I have to offer you mm -hmm. and what you have to offer me, what is the, what is, what is the compelling mm -hmm. core competency that you have? Mm -hmm. What is the compelling characteristic that you possess the values that you have in your mind and in your spirit, in your heart that, 
that that motivate you to to do things in a certain way what is it that gives you leverage over the other person right right so for 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 this lady again we're referring to the lady in the video to say that the kenyan men that she has dealt with weren't doing the things that she wanted maybe she just didn't have the leverage vis-a-vis what they found important yes and yet for the nigerian men who uh interact with her what's important to them might be an entirely be different, different yeah. set of characteristics. Yeah. So again, it's about the individual that you're dealing with. What is it that's important to you? What is it important to you? what is it that's important to you, Joan, and how can any man who stands in front of you as a suitor mm-hmm. present himself as somebody who is worthy in terms of what he has to offer? Some guys will make the cut, other guys won't make the cut. Um, and ultimately it's about what you choose. And I think we as individuals need to start living in, living in the reality that there's no other individual to blame for the misfortune of your romantic relationships than yourself. Mm. Because there are, there are a greater than, there's a greater chance than not that you've seen the red flags, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you chose deliberately to ignore them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've seen characteristics and behaviors that made you think twice, but you chose to ignore them. Mm-hmm. Once you choose to ignore and proceed down that path, all bets are off. It's 100% your responsibility, whatever happens after that. Yeah. And that'll be that. And let me just say the last thing, right? Um, we all look at ourselves... And I've noticed this. I don't know if this is, um, I heard this stat that women suffer from mental health issues more than men. And there is actually a mental health issues called um, delusion of grandeur. It, it can be associated with bipolar disorder, things like that. People who feel like um, they are greater than what, what they are. And um, we all love ourselves to a certain degree. But to your point, what do other people feel like the way I feel about myself is not how women feel about me. That's for sure. Look at DJ academics. The problem he's going through right now. He's rich. He thinks he's the stuff, but look at the, how the women feed him. <laughs> That's a different story. And a lot of women feel like they are the prize. And then when you ask them like Kevin always asks them, what do you bring to the table? Well, I'm smart. I'm funny. I'm educated. I'm hardworking. If those are the things that you feel you desire, but like a lot of women don't really understand what men desire. It's almost like starting a business in a, in a, in a market that you don't understand. And this seems to be a constitutive problem with young women everywhere, especially from what I'm seeing here in Africa. And what's going to happen is you can keep hyping up yourself all you want. I always says my videos. I wish I could play point guard for the Sacramento Kings. Unfortunately, I don't got what it take. I wanted to go to Harvard. Didn't have what it takes there either. You know what I mean? So you can want whatever you want. That does it is free to desire whatever you want. It doesn't mean that you're great enough to get it. And most ladies, unfortunately, to get with the kind of guy that they want, they just don't got what it takes. And in the words of my good friend Rayford, well, JB, she didn't make it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure some people are hurt by this episode. You're either learning or you're hurt by it. But I hope that you're learning. <laughs> But yeah, we can end this one. Do you guys, are we, can we end it? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, that was enough to save the whole entire <laughs> Africa right there. That was enough. 2024 is a year of growth. <laughs> okay. 2024 is a year of abundant increase. Yeah. So all of you out there who are aspiring to find love, I send you blessings and okay. good luck. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Last thing. My favorite boxer of all time, one of them was Larry Holmes. He's from Easton, Pennsylvania. And you walk into his gym, there is a sign. Hard work is not easy. I want to tell you ladies out there, hard work is not easy. If you feel like you want somebody to take care of you and you feel like you're worth your weight in gold, it has never been the most difficult time in the world's history to be a woman getting a man that can take care of you than 2024. So I leave you with what Larry Holmes said. Hard work is not easy. And to get the kind of guy that you want that has a lot of options, get to work. Oh. Make sure you get out every morning, throw that jab. Ah, ah. 
Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, guys, you can let us know what you think in the comment section and you can follow us on all our social media platforms. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.